Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob ENT podcast, the best sports podcast in New Jersey. Even though we are not in the game, we know the game. We have special guests on with us. Tyra Hunt, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing really well. I'm so excited to talk with you today and see what's going on. So for those that do not know, thank you. First off, again, appreciate you hopping on with us. This guest we have on, super talented in the creation space. She has her own media space of Tyra Janae Media. Make sure y'all go follow, subscribe. The YouTube is dope. A lot of different content up there. That's something that you definitely want to do. It'll be worth your time for sure. Thank you again for hopping on. You watching this, you listen to this, subscribe, rate us five stars, leave a review. For you, I'm going to start here. Was being a sports content creator always your dream, always something that you wanted to do as a kid growing up? Honestly, yes. Um, when I was younger, I always had a camera in my hands. I was definitely the kid that made all of my friends who came over be in my movies and to be filmed by me or whatever it was. And I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do with it growing up. I just knew that I liked to do it. And I had a million other career paths in mind, but this is the one that stuck out for me. So, um, yeah, I, I, I guess I could say this is something that I knew I always wanted to do and something that I've always enjoyed. So, um, luckily I'm still doing it today. That's dope being that it started when you were young and you're still doing it now. And it's something that you love to do. Is it like in general, really just the, also the love for sports? Cause I did see, don't get it confused for those that's watching this. She did run track at MSU. She, she wasn't, she just didn't pick up the camera. She was athletic too. How did, you know, what was it about that? You said, I want to be behind the camera and handling that aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it ties into both. I mean, holding a camera is something I've always done. And then, of course, tying my love into sports. Like you said, I ran track in college and have played a million sports growing up. And I grew up in a sports family. Uh, my parents both played sports and so did my siblings. So it's just something that we have always loved and something that I've grown up to love. And then being able to recognize when my time was done as an athlete myself to figure out a way that I could continue to immerse myself in sports and honestly – I paired both together of I love to capture sports and I still love sports. What can I do with doing both? And that's doing the job that I do today. That's super dope because I know it's a lot of athletes when that time comes where they're not able to perform their sport anymore. They kind of got to hang it up and they don't have that that love anymore. They don't get to have that opportunity that you're doing that. Hey, I get to still do what I love. I combined both parties with it. For you, how did you get that start in that sports industry doing the content creation? Yeah, I had a I have a journey that I I just love to talk about just because it was far from straight. I mean, um to start my love for essentially sports photography was my senior year of high school and I joined the yearbook staff and I was helping out with sports photography there and I was really enjoying it and I was getting a little exposure from my classmates and my friends of saying like, wait, you're kind of good at this. And that's when um, I, I started to kind of reframe my mindset of like, okay, what do I want to do as a career and how can I make it happen? And that's when um, my freshman year of college, I went to a school in Indiana and they didn't have the programs that I was looking to study. And I received a track track scholarship from there. So that's kind of why I went that route. But recognizing that I wasn't going to grow in my career, I transferred to Michigan State University, which is where I ran track there. And I majored in journalism mm -hmm. with a focus in photojournalism, where I could really like hone in on photography and like learn the uh, what's the word, learn the rules of photography, essentially, and like actually become knowledgeable on the topic rather than just liking to do it, also knowing how to do it well. And there, since I was an athlete, I was able to get in contact with the athletic communications department there and asked about if I could shoot sports to help build my portfolio. And it ended up kind of catapulting me further when it came to building my portfolio, like making connections with athletes and like being able to like start to gain more exposure as like a sports photographer at the time. Um, and that's something that I really enjoyed. And um, within that journey, 
I also ended up upgrading a camera randomly. Uh, this is a story I love to tell. I decided to upgrade my camera out of nowhere. And that day, my photos were not turning out. I was shooting a gymnastics meet at the time, and my photos were not clear. They were not focusing. And I thought there was some sort of malfunction, but I just didn't set up the camera yet. And I ended up just trying to test out video, see if I liked it. I got to deliver something. Um, and that's actually what started my videography journey, which is crazy. Um, so that's kind of my rocky path to getting into sports and kind of finding my love for it. Um, and then that's when, um, I guess I don't know if I should go all the way into depth. I'm not trying to take up too much time, but you're fine. You're fine. I mean, after school, I was applying to jobs like crazy. I was getting told no at every corner, like that you don't have enough experience or your portfolio isn't big enough or whatever it was. And I was just so discouraged. And I was just told no hundreds of times to a point where I was like, this is probably not for me anymore. Like I thought it was <laughs> and like, I guess I, I just maybe overshot things. I don't know. So I ended up kind of mentally giving up on my sports industry goal. And that's when I started applying to like agency jobs and trying to find a way to still remain in photography and videography, just maybe not from the angle that I thought I could. Um, and then within the week, I received my first sports industry job offer from the Chicago Red Stars. Um, I, I don't know. At the time, I wasn't sure I was going to get the job. I felt confident about it. But like with the amount of no's I got, I was just like, would just be another one to add onto the list. But that was my first sports industry full-time job was with the Chicago Red Stars starting as their social media manager. So that's kind of the long winded journey up until my first job. Um, and now I'm with the Portland Trailblazers. So. No, I'm glad you share that. Cause that's needed uh, for anybody that watches to hear that story, to keep pushing and to keep going with it and knowing it's not, it's not linear. Sometimes it could go here, here, and then you end up at your ultimate goal. Shoot. I needed to hear that. I heard a couple of no's today. Perfect timing. So I'm glad you shared that story um, because it is tough. No after no after no. I've considered multiple times like, oh, I don't know this sports podcasting thing. I don't know. No, no, no. And then there's people like you that say yes. So Again, we appreciate you hopping on with us. You mentioned you upgraded the camera and then you ended up, that's how you find out about the videography side and you was good at it. What were the first camera you had and like, what are you using now? To start, I started on, I think it was the Canon 30D, which I just actually recently looked it up and I think it's like 60 bucks online now. So it's just crazy to see the uh, evolution, I guess, of camera gear and uh, honestly to prove that you don't need the most expensive and crazy gear to get started. Um, so that's what I started on. And now I'm shooting with the Canon R6, which that definitely hurt my pockets, but it's definitely worth the investment just because, I mean, looking at my work from when I first started to the work that I'm creating now, it is night and day, whether that's quality. I mean, and obviously adding experience and several years in between that time frame, but it's night and day. Um, so that upgrade was a huge investment for me and also really, really helped me continue to pave that sports industry path that I'm currently on right now. That's super dope. Cause I've talked to a couple people that, has, that have cameras and they tell me you don't need the most expensive camera to actually put out good work yeah. and it's expensive. I've seen it a couple of times. People don't understand. It doesn't all come together as one piece. Yeah. Like the most, what would you say is like the most expensive part of actually getting the camera? Is it the lens? I mean, or honestly, yeah, it like depends because I just bought a camera body and when I bought that body, it was two grand. So it's like, it depends. And like when I'm looking at lenses and I have just a long wish list of camera gear that I want. And one of the lenses that I want is two grand itself. So it's like, being able to like kind of hop that, uh, what's the word? Being able to kind of like let go of like, this is expensive. I, I, I can't do it, which like, obviously, yes, don't go maxing out your credit card, but like <laughs> recognizing like what you need as a content creator and like, what do you think and know will like help elevate your work? Then it's like, it is important to make that investment in your career. And that's just what I decided to do when I got this new camera, which 
has continued to only elevate how my content looks and the work that I can create. Yeah, sometimes for the best of the business and your dreams and your goals, you got to invest in yourself. View it as an investment versus another thing. Like you said, though, anybody watching, we're not telling you to max out your credit card. Do what you got to do first and let it <laughs> let it get to that point. Yeah. yeah. Use, use what you got right now for, for now. Don't don't max out the credit card. Please don't. Yeah, that's, that's something that I've been also like trying to push is like, yes, it is smart and good to invest in yourself and like take that leap of like this camera equipment I know will help me be better. And like, this is going to help me, but it's also like, I have to also recognize, like I need to live within my means as well. And knowing that like, if I can't physically do a two grand camera equipment purchase right now, then that's okay too. Because like, like it took me several years, if not 10, you know, to like decide to make that adjustment, you know, like I, I started with the 30 D and then I upgraded, I traded that camera in and upgraded to the 70. And then when I was using that, that's when my camera wasn't focusing and all these things. And that's what I was shooting on up until actually, I think, I think I got my R6 in the spring of last year. And I was in a job already within the sports industry. So that was just a call that I made because I was noticing that the quality of my content wasn't to the quality that I wanted. And that's when I knew like, okay, the only way for me to change this is to drop that money. And like, I want my content to look better and I want to continue growing within my content creation. So like, I knew that that was just something that I had to do and it ended up being okay. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely makes sense. And I'm glad it all worked out because, you know, sometimes, like you said, it took you close to 10 years to actually make that adjustment. Hey, and you were still able to be productive and do what you needed to do during that time frame. Now, within that, with being in the content creation space, you know, Tyra Janae Media and everything that you do with that content creation for you, when do you know or when do you feel like, hey, this is good content to actually be shared with my audience, to be shared on socials? Do you go through second guessing? Like, when do you know for you, like, all right. I'm done. I got enough edits. All this is, is actually good to go. That's a tough question. And like, honestly, like sometimes I don't like uh, just to be honest. I mean, there's definitely times where like I put my foot into an edit and I'm like, this is amazing. And like, I'm showing the world this and like, and I'm even like, sometimes I'll even look back at some of my old edits and be like, Oh my goodness. Like <laughs> what was I doing? Yeah. It's like, that's just like kind of comes with like growth when it comes to like being in this space, because it's like at that time, I probably thought that was the greatest thing in the world. But like looking back at it and like growing, continuing to grow within this field, I'm like, OK, like I probably shouldn't have done all that. Like, let me and like I definitely like critique my own work. I mean, all the time. I'm definitely my biggest critic. But um, as far as what I'm putting out now, it's like. I have found that I've gone through a path of like figuring out like confidence within my work and mm. like that's not an easy uh place to get to um i feel like there's so many content creators out there and there's it's so easy to kind of compare yourself to like oh i wish my style looked like that and i wish my editing style could be like that too and i i wish i knew how to do that and i i feel like it's really easy to do that just because i mean working in this space it's all around you and it's like I feel like for me, I, I try not to let certain things get to me. And I, I try to just remain confident within myself and within my work because like I, I did work really hard to get to where I'm at and right now. And I did work really, really hard in those days where I wanted to give up and I didn't. And like, I, I feel like with what I put out now, I look at it and I'm like, man, like I worked really hard to make this look the way that it did. And I'm proud of it. And I really do view as like, posting my work, not as like a, Hey, everyone look how cool I am and what I did. It's more of like, Hey everyone, I worked my butt off on this and I want to share it with you all too. And that's just kind of like the mindset that I have when it comes to publishing a reel or posting a deck of photos that I shot at a soccer game or at whatever it is. Like I, I really just try to remain confident within myself and know that I worked hard to put it together and that 
it doesn't always need to be well received. I think being well received is obviously everyone's goal. I mean, everyone wants to hear kudos at the end of the day. And I am deeply appreciative for the kudos that I've ever received, but it, not everything that I create is going to be well received and that's okay too. Um, but I'm happy with it. And that's what gives me that like confidence and that like reassurance of like, I kind of just post what I'm comfortable with and what I'm happy with, if that makes sense. No, that makes a hundred percent sense. I'm still, that's something that I battle with back and forth. Like, yo, this was a dope interview. I asked great questions. Oh my gosh. They gave great stories. Post it. Why y'all don't, y'all don't feel the same. Y'all not, y'all not feeling the same, but have to actually, like you said, be confident within myself. Like, no, this is still a good job. Everything isn't going to be received well like i may perceive it but if i'm okay with myself like hey i did my research i did this I, hey that's all i can do yeah and i i feel that way when it comes to like i feel that way when it comes to posting my work and like it, like i said it, it is tough because it's like again i feel like we're all our own biggest critics of like ah, like looking back at this, I wish I did this instead, or ah, I don't know if this is going to be well received and then say it's not well received and it doesn't get like the engagement that you thought it would or that you were hoping for or whatever it is. And then that in itself is just like discouraging. Sorry, I like stumbled over my words. That within oh, itself God. is discouraging to like work so hard on something and second guess it. And then when you put it out, it doesn't get well received. And it's like, well, dang, like I probably shouldn't have put it out in the first place. But it's like, I, I feel like, I used to be like that where like I'd post something and like if in an hour it didn't have this many likes and it's getting archived like no like I'm at the point where like one if I don't like it I'm not gonna share it but like two like I work hard on what I make and like I thoroughly enjoy creating content like I thoroughly enjoy taking pictures taking videos doing social media like I thoroughly enjoy being in this field. So it's like, what I'm going to put out is something that I'm obviously happy with and obviously proud of. And like, if it's not received, like I said, it's okay. Like I'm not posting for that. You know, like I, mm. I, I like to have Instagram essentially be like a digital portfolio for me of like, this is the work that I can create. And then this is also the field that I work in and it is attainable and like, you can do it like, and just kind of what I try and push out of my page is like, motivation, like confirmation, and also my work on top of that. And that's kind of like the environment I'm trying to create. So it's like, if it's not well received, that's okay. It's just like, I guess like just continuing to keep that confidence that you have within yourself and in your work stronger and just kind of basing your work off of that and you're posting off of that. That makes sense. Now, would you say within everything that was just mentioned, is that the most difficult part for you of content creation of keeping that confidence? Is like that the most difficult part for you is like, hey, I got to constantly make sure I'm staying in this headspace of being confident in what I'm putting out. It, it definitely is challenging. I think like mm, there's a couple of challenging pieces, I think, within this field of like remaining confident in yourself. Yes. Like. Because like I said, comparison is one of the biggest leaps of joy. Like I and I find myself doing that from time to time. And I've been a lot better with it um, more recently just because like I'm on the path that I'm on mm -hmm. for a reason. I'm not on a shared path with anyone. Like, you know, like I'm having to continuously kind of like remind myself of like, it's okay. Like you should be confident in that. Like you did work really hard in that. And this is something that I actually just talked about in one of my last vlogs of kind of how to work on exuding confidence within yourself and within your work and how tough it actually is, but like how important it, it is too, because it's like, if you're not confident in what you're posting, like how can you expect other people to be, you know? And like, that's something that I, I, I struggled myself with of like, I wasn't confident with it, but it might land, you know? And then like, if it wouldn't, then like my confidence would go downhill even more. And like, it was just like an uphill battle of like, now I'm at the point of like, all I can do is be happy with what I put out. And if I'm not, then that means I need to go back to the drawing board and like figure out a new way to make it and figure out a new way to create if I'm continuously unhappy with what I'm putting out. But like, I, I feel like I'm at a point where I, I am 
more more than I, I guess I don't know how to word that. I, I feel like now I've never been more confident in my work than I've ever been. I don't know. I, I'm stumbling no, over the words again, but no, that that work. I get what you're saying. Yeah, that work, it, yeah. It, but it is really hard. I mean, I'm not gonna act like I I'm the most confident girl in the world when it comes to my work every single day. I mean, like I said, there's days where I fall off and like days where I like question everything and I'm like, am I really good at this? Like I, I, I'm human, you know, it's just like continuing to just like have that like positive self aspect and also support around you and um, the reps as well, continuing to shoot. I mean, you can't get better by not doing it. So it's like, I just kind of try my best to keep that up. And then I, I think like just another hard part about this field is just also, I mean, uh, what's the word? I guess trends. Like, I mean, I work in social media full time and like staying up with trends and like making sure you are like reaching an office or reaching an audience properly and like resonating with fans or like from my full time side, but like resonating with like my personal audience on my personal side, like that's hard. So, you know, so like that, that's probably like a really, that's another really challenging thing for me, I think within this field is just trying to stay on top of like, yes, I want to show my work. Yes. I want to remain relevant. Yes. I want to be a part of this trend. How do I make this happen? Cause trends change within like a day. So it's like, how can I stay on top of this and rush? And it's just like that. That's probably a really, really challenging um, point of it for me too. Honestly. I, I definitely get that people. I don't think understand sometimes that social media aspect that's really a, that's not even a nine to five. That's from when you wake up to you go to sleep. Cause like you <laughs> said, especially yeah. in the sports world too, that was hot right now. Literally in two hours might be whoop, yeah. they on to the next thing, the next trend. It just goes like this. So I definitely get that within also too. Like, Hey, should I still even touch this trend? Am I, am I too late to get into it? Like, yeah. So I 100% completely get that. Um, for those, again, this is this is just a little tad bit. Check out the YouTube. It's a lot of good gems on her YouTube page. A lot of stuff she mentioned talking about having confidence and talking about, you know, confirmation and helping. Her YouTube page is definitely, <laughs> that's where it's at for sure. You want to check that out. For you, right, with all of the content that you've created, you know, you said you had the job with uh, the Chicago for the the soccer. That was the soccer team, right? Yep. So from soccer, basketball, personal content, all these different the photos and reels. What's your actual favorite type of content to create and why? Hmm. This one stumped me. Um, as far as like real, like video or photo or like. Uh, how are it could you? be. It could be. You might like creating photos more. You might like creating reels more. Whatever for you is like your favorite thing, favorite type of content, I should say, to actually create. Honestly, like I can't pick one or the other with photo and video, which I think is a blessing and a curse because it's like I love both mm -hmm. genuinely equally. Um, I started out my journey with photography and that's gen that's all that I wanted to do. And, um, pointing back to that vlog that I was mentioning earlier in one of my last vlogs, I was talking about versatility and, um, at first my not willing, I was not willing to be versatile. I was like, I'm a photographer and that's what I am and that's what I'm going to be. And like, I didn't realize how harmful that was to like what I was trying to accomplish. Mm. And that's when I like, luckily had that camera issue, but like, dabbled into videography and ended up like strengthening my knowledge in videography to where like at, there was a point where I finally realized like, okay, I feel equally equipped in video and in photo to where like prior to like making a sports job move, like in my head, I was like, I would be comfortable going to either, like either side. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just where like, Honestly, if I had to pick my favorite type, I don't necessarily have an answer other than like, I love both. And I think that's a really cool thing for me to be able to say is because 
if you asked me this like five years ago, it would have been like photography for sure. I don't even know what you're talking about with video. Like I would have shut that down, but it's like to be able to say that I love two things equally and like I'm passionate about two things equally is pretty cool to me. So, I mean, as of right now, I've been on a reels kick um, on my media page. I've been posting a ton of reels. Um, I actually just had a crazy amount of traction on a reel that I actually was not even going to post. I didn't think about posting it. And I was like, ah, it might not resonate. See, like right there, I was like doubting myself. And I was like, ah, there's no point. And then like I posted it. And within the last like two to three weeks, I think it's at like 210,000 views and I've gained, I'm almost at 10,000 followers on Instagram. Like it's a crazy path that deciding to bet on myself and post a reel what it would do. But, um, yeah, that actually was a reel of photo and video. So to kind of tie in my answer to that, I mean, I, I genuinely love both and I love to combine both. I'll even make, uh, go shoot a cinematic video and toss in some photos as like a creative edit as well. Like I, I really love both. That's dope to be able to love both. And it just, you know, speaks to you loving what you do. Yeah. And yes, it's at 210,000 with about something like I saw earlier, it was like 16 or 13,000 likes. Yeah. It's blowing, it's blowing up. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And it's really good content also, yeah. but shout out to you also for actually putting it out as it speaks to literally what you were saying earlier. And that's how I actually stumbled upon your page. Was that real, actually? No and way. I was like, oh, shoot. And that's when I DM'd you. It looked dope. So that's the actual thing that I stumbled upon myself. So it ended up on my page, actually. So No, that's so awesome to hear. That makes me so happy. Yeah, Jenny, I literally wasn't going to post it. I, I remember making it because I saw, I think I saw a similar reel um, along the same lines. And I was like, oh, it's a trend. Like I swiped past this a couple of times. Uh, maybe I'll just try this trend. And that was again, like kind of pointing back to what we were talking about earlier of like staying on top of a trend. I saw it and I was like, okay, I have the content to put this together. Like, and then I watched it back and I'm like, eh, I don't know. And I posted it. And since then I'm like, oh my gosh, I will never question myself ever again. And if I like something, I'm posting it. So yeah, that, that opened a door to uh, something that I, I knew I could achieve one day. I didn't think it would be so mm -hmm. soon to hit. Uh, um, I mean, I'm not at 10K quite yet. Um, hopefully within the next week, I'm crossing my fingers. But um, just kind of being, having my work seen is just really something that it feels good. I mean, just to feel seen as a creator and like have my work out there and getting exposure um, definitely is like a plus on top of me being happy with what I'm putting out too. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that that's how you found me. So. Oh yeah. I was happy. Again, we already discussed it. I was happy that you even responded back, but <laughs> that's, that's just funny how, you know, how God works within that mindset, like of like, Hey, don't move in doubt. If you move in faith and you put it out, you never know what's going to happen from that. So shout out to that for you with everything that we mentioned, you might've kind of already answered this, but if you had to define success in your space of work and content creation, how do you define success for you? That's a great question. Um, being happy. Like I know that sounds so cliche to like, oh, love what you do. If you are happy doing what you're doing and then it's not work, like whatever they say, I don't even know what the saying is. I know I just butchered that, but like, I am not trying to be cliche. I'm being so serious of like success to me, like where I felt like, like I, I remember when I accepted that job in Chicago and I told myself, like, I, I remember looking back, uh, it was the new years of 2022 and I write down my new year's resolutions every year. I always do it, whether it's like a mood board and a notebook, whatever. And I remember I wrote like work for a pro team by the end of the year, full time. And then I accepted a job in March and then I went to Chicago in April. So it was like very quick. And like in that moment, I felt like, oh my gosh, I made it. Like I did it. And it's one of my biggest accomplishments ever and something I'm still so proud of. And it's just like, I genuinely love 
like I, I've been mentioning, like I love to take pictures and I love to take videos and I love to post on social media. Like it's something I love to do. And it's like, I feel like that's a really hard barrier when it like comes to career paths. Cause like, I mean, before this, like when I was mentioning at the very beginning of like, was this something I always wanted to do? And how I said I had a million career paths in my head. Like there was a point in high school where like, I wanted to be a forensic scientist, which is like not even near what I'm doing right now. And that's okay too. Cause there's still a dream for me that I want to be in the FBI one day. But like, again, it's on the back burner, but like, like, I feel like picking out what you want to do for the rest of your life is like one of the hardest things to do. And like, yes. That's where like, I feel to tie that all in to the success piece is like, I do feel successful right now because I've like, I was able to hone in on something that I want to do. And then like, I was able to work extraordinarily hard and build connections and build my portfolio and spend a multiple thousands of dollars on equipment and like continue to like invest in myself and in my career and in my journey and like go through so much adversity of like, no, you're not, you don't have experience. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to get it then? And like, I just like going through so much to like get to like this very moment to where right now I'm working for the Portland trailblazers full time. And that is like, if you, someone asked me if I would be doing that two years ago, three years ago, I'd have been like, oh, okay. Like, like, we'll see, like, maybe like, just because of like where I was at then I was like, there's no way I'm getting a job in sports. Like I, in my head, not out outwardly in, in my head, I'm like, I've been told no so many times I can't do it. But then I was just like, just keep pushing. Like, and honestly, I, I do feel like success is measured for me within like my happiness and joy within what I do. And like, I, I feel like I am, I'm, I'm not trying to say like, I've hit my peak and I'm the best at what I do. And, you know, sayonara from here on out, that's like not where I'm coming from. It's more of like, I've worked my butt off to this point and I still plan on working my butt off. And like, I just feel like being happy with what I do and being able to select what I want to do. And like to find reward within that of like landing a job or like getting a cool freelance gig or like getting a new, whatever it is, like, I define like being happy with what I do and like enjoying it. And like, I, I feel like that is success to me. So. I think that's good. Um, just on the aspect of we sometimes as a society perceive success as reaching. All right. Once I had the 2.4 million followers and I got this in the bank account, all of the stuff that led up to that, not saying there's nothing wrong with that. Of course not. Mm -hmm. Please fill my bank account. But <laughs> the process and the journey up to that, I think that's where the success really is and embracing that and understanding, like you said, I'm working my butt off and I'm seeing results. That should be celebrated and embraced just as much as reaching the top. Whatever yeah. that top be for somebody. Yeah. And like, this is funny because right when you said that, the first thing that popped in my head was J. Cole, like beauty and the struggle, ugliness and the success. And like, that was the first thing that like popped in my head because it's like, I am not trying to portray, like when it comes to like posting on my media page and that mo motivation and my work and whatever it is, I'm not again, like trying to portray myself as this, like I'm at the top and I'm this amazing creator and get like me. Like, that's just like, not at all what I'm trying to portray. It's more of like, I'm trying to push people to like one, believe in themselves because like if 2021 Tyra, 2022 Tyra didn't like, and gave up, like I would not be sitting in Portland right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's more of just like trying to like push people to like, see that like you can find success within what you do as long as you continue to put in the work and believe in yourself and do it. And like, that's where like, to me, like I get so excited when I'm asked about like, Oh, talk about your sports industry journey. Like talk about how you got to the exact moment that you're in right now. And like, I love to talk about it because like, it wasn't pretty, like it wasn't perfect. Like I didn't just like graduate from college in the spring and had a summer job. Like it was not like 
I spent several months with nothing and like no job and no internship and living at my parents' house. And like, I, I had to go through that and like, it wasn't pretty. So it, it, it is, it is really cool to me to be able to talk about it because like I did push to get what I want and like what I felt like my content deserved. And like, I did push to fulfill a dream of mine. My dream of mine is to work in professional sports and, you know, like, and I did push for that. So it's just like, yeah, it, it's the, 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 I feel like the struggle is like the fun part to talk about, you know, like it's, it's, it's awesome to like definitely capitalize on like my role with the Blazers. And it's definitely awesome to capitalize and like express and share with other people, like how cool it is. And like, how awesome it is. And then also like my personal stuff, it's awesome to talk about it. But I think like the ugliness in that journey is like the meat of the story and like talking about like, cause we all go through like self doubt at some point in some facet of something, like we all go through something. So it's like, it's cool. I, I really do. I thoroughly enjoy talking about how I got into the, into the industry and like how I'm creating still to this day. So it, it does, yeah, beauty in that struggle. I think we just found out the title for the episode, Tyra Hunt, Beauty in the Struggle. I love it. And it, 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 there goes the title right there. That I think that perfectly exemplifies what you've been talking about so far. It's actually embracing that period, embracing yeah. that and realizing, like you said, there's beauty in this actual aspect of it. Within all of that, our last question before we get to the fourth quarter segment, which is kind of the fun segment with the get to know them a little bit more questions. What keeps you motivated? How do you stay motivated? How do you stay inspired? That's a good question. I mean, honestly, uh, that's something that I kind of struggle with from time to time, I think. Um, Sometimes I'm not, you know, <laughs> like sometimes I'm not at all. Like I have found myself in periods where like, I don't want to make anything and I am not good at this anymore and I'm done. Like I, not really, but like I'll have moments like that where like I'm not inspired and I don't know what to create next. And sometimes I'll just have like a dead period of posting stuff. And that I find that to be okay too, because I, at the time I just didn't have it and I thought it was better to not have it at all than to post something that I wasn't even happy with in the first place just to get something out. Like, it's just like not kind of how I like to do things. But as far as like what I do internally to like get myself back on track, it's like, I do all like one thing I, I really like to talk about is like finding inspiration within other creators too. I mean, not necessarily looking at someone's video and be like, I think I'm going to make that exact same thing. Like, it's more of like, this was awesome. And I loved the color scheme that they just used within mm. this video or like, Oh my gosh, their sound design is awesome. I'm going to have to try to practice more sound design and like figure out something within that. And then like, as I'm looking into be better at sound design, I'm now inspired to make a video that uses the sounds I just downloaded or like things like that. So I do find a lot of inspiration within other creators. I think that, um, on my media page, I follow so many talented professionals in this organ or organization, please. I'm stuttering. I follow so many talented professionals within this field. There we go. And it's just, it's really cool to see what, I, what other people put out. Cause it's like, what an awesome concept for someone to have. And then like, now I feel like maybe I could get some inspiration from that to snowball into my own idea and my own concept and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, I really like to use my resources. An another way that I like to be or find inspiration. Um, I do have a mentor. Um, his name is Travis Ellison and he is awesome. He worked in, he still is actually in the sports creative field, but he worked uh, for the Minnesota Vikings and the Seattle Seahawks and all of these amazing teams and has a hefty portfolio and resume um, within this field. And he became my mentor a few years back and, um, we'll send things back and forth every once in a while to kind of keep those creative juices flowing, or I'll send him a concept. What do you think of this? And, um, get that feedback, but, um, probably my resources. Uh, my cousin Van is awesome too. Van Norris. He, um, is a content creator well within this space and he, his videos are insane. Like his videos are nuts. Um, his Instagram, I think is Norris vision. And 
he is like has the most crazy creative eye I've ever seen. So like literally just like watching his stuff or having a conversation with him about editing helps me uh, remain inspired too. But um, and then I guess for my third thing, probably just going to shoot something um, as basic as it sounds, just like going outside with my camera and filming something, shooting something, whether it's random or whether it's something I planned um, and then seeing what I could make out of that footage or out of those photos and just kind of like rolling with that and like letting a project kind of create itself. Um, but yeah, those are probably the three things that I do the most to remain um, motivated and inspired. Shout out to the mentor, shout out to your cousin. That's great to have, as you said, those resources to be able to bounce ideas off of, to be able to draw inspiration from. She gave the IG, go check it out. I'm gonna go check it out because I love watching videos like that to have inspiration, even though I'm not in the same type of space. I try to dabble in it here and there to do a little yeah. something, something. So yeah, definitely go check it out. Like I said, that's how I saw your video. I was like, oh. Okay, I, I yeah. like what I'm looking at. I, yeah. I, I, I liked it. Fourth quarter segment. So we always ask a question regarding food because I am a foodie. I eat for three or four. It may not look like it, but I definitely do. If you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would that meal be? Um, I'm going to go as specific as the restaurant and dish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So before I moved out to Portland, um, I lived in Chicago and there is this place called the pasta bowl. And that was my go-to when I lived there. It was recommended to me by a friend I'm like, this is the best pasta ever. And when you look at the outside, you're like, like, maybe, like it might not be, but like, I don't know. It looks a little weird, dark in there, but no, it, their chicken Alfredo, I would eat pasta bowls, chicken Alfredo every meal of the day, every day for as long as I get to live another day. So that is my meal that I could eat every single day forever. Pasta bowl, chicken Alfredo. Okay. I haven't been to Chicago yet, but I will definitely, I have a whole note in my phone of all the places in different cities I have to go. That is going to That's be added to the list for sure. Yep. Would you rather be in that? I saw one of your highlights on your page is traveling would you rather upgrade your hotel room to a suite or fly first class upgrade my hotel room to a, ah no i changed my mind first class i'll say why i was gonna say a suite because the flight is like such a short period of it but then again i am not one, when I'm on vacation to remain in a hotel, I like to be out and about on walks at the beach, filming something, eating, drinking, whatever it is. I, I like to be out and about. So I'll probably like to have a better flight experience rather than how I've been flying my whole life. <laughs> but um, a flight experience would be cool just because I don't spend a ton of time in a hotel anyways when I'm traveling. I'm the same exact way. I have to find balance because my wife likes to stay in a little bit more, but I like to go out and go a bunch of different places. So that's just me. So I'm definitely here with you on that one. Give me the first, give me the first class flight. I yep. want to try. Let me try that hotel. Uh, not so much. So also you posted some plants. What's your favorite plant? I actually am sitting right next to my favorite plant. I have a monstera tree. Um, that I call it, a, I, I think it's a tree. I think it's supposed to be because it's like eight feet tall, I swear. It is like the most unbelievable thing I've witnessed. I went to a plant store, like two days of living in Portland. I became a plant mom as soon as I touched down in Oregon. Um, and I saw this cute monstera tree. It was probably like, if it was standing up next to me, I'm about like five three, five four, Standing up next to me, probably at like chest level mm -hmm. of height. Now it is, it has grown at least two feet since I've lived here. And it is my pride and joy of keeping this plant alive because I, I didn't think I'd be a plant mom. I didn't get plants because I thought I'd kill them all, but I am doing well. I have like six plants in my apartment, but my monstera tree, I will pan this camera over a little bit, but. Oh, oh yeah. It is going up the wall because it is so tall. Um, 
But yeah, my monstera tree is my pride and joy. So that is my favorite plant. Shout out to that. Hey, you better than me. I already know I don't have a green thumb, so I don't mess. My mom, my mom, that's my mom. I don't mess with no, I can cook. I'll leave it at cooking. I'm not touching any plants at all. Yeah, I felt the same way. And I actually threw a plant away um, about a month ago because it was just like damaged beyond control. Like it died. Like it, there was no like <laughs> revival. It died. Um, but one plant right now I'm kind of fighting with cause it keeps, it's very dramatic and it'll die for like a day and look all depressed. And then I'll water it, move it uh, like an inch over to get like an ounce more sun. And then it perks back up again. Like they're just, they're dramatic. I never thought I'd be a plant mom, but I do have an app that I use that tells me when I should water them and what's wrong with them. So I wouldn't take all the credit for keeping this one alive because I know what's wrong with it all the time. So. I did see a commercial for that app, so I was I was supposed to write it down and give it to my mom. I think, I, it's, saw, I think it's called Picture Picture This. I think is what it's. Yeah, it's this green app right in the middle. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. The I saw Picture it. This app right there. Yeah, I okay. use that. I think I that's what pay, it was. I do pay a subscription for it, um, but it's worth it because now my plants aren't dying. So. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we had a different question to end off. You mentioned that you follow so many creators and so many dope creators. I'm going to switch the question to that. Who are some of your favorite creators that you follow? Yeah. Um, that I kind of knew where this question was going. So I went to pull up um, a couple Instagram ads, but, um, Definitely Travis Ellison that I mentioned earlier. Um, he actually has his own LLC now and he covers a range of sports and he works with USC athletics. I think he's been extremely talented since I can even remember. And he's someone that I look up to a lot in this field. Um, another creator, Aaron James, he is a freelancer who works with several agencies and athletes and teams. I think he is unbelievably talented and I found him on Instagram a few years back and he actually found me through that reel that you found me through and commented on it and said that my work was good and that was like one of my fangirl moments of like feeling so accomplished because I'm like a creator I've watched for so long thinks my work is good like uh that was so cool um and then I'm trying to find one more actually no I'm gonna go with um, Dakota Silliman, he, um, I worked with him at the Chicago Red Stars. He's their senior videographer and content producer. And he has just such an eye that not many people have. He has, yes, the sports and action eye that he can very much succeed at capturing, but he also has such an eye for detail and emotion and the things that you don't normally think of when you want to watch like a sports reel and he captures all of that and so beautifully um he was a huge resource as far as like inspiration for me and like even just like a learning point when i was like hey dakota i don't really know how to do this and he was like oh this is how you do it and it was just he's been a huge help within my sports industry journey and career. Uh, we worked together for the two years I was at the red stars and he is an awesome creator and his work needs to be elevated and shouted from the rooftops. Cause he, he he's, he's great. He's an awesome human and an awesome creator as well. Well, thank you for sharing those. Everybody make sure you go follow and check them out. I just even looked up real quick, Aaron James. I'm like, the name sounds familiar. Yeah. Yes. Yes. His work is insane. He is very, insane. Very elite, different yeah. level. I have to go check out the other two, but I've heard of Aaron James. I'm like, name sounds very familiar from somewhere. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah. But for those that just tuning in for whatever reason, this is Tyra Hunt. We thank you so much for hopping on the podcast with us, taking time out of your schedule. And y'all know the vibes here at the Bench Mob. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Bench mob, we out. Peace.